Hey everybody, my name is Kim Siever. Welcome back to my channel. I keep seeing people holding up Portugal as the preeminent example of how to respond to the drug crisis. In the last two decades, drug usage among youth has dropped there. Their STI rate has dropped, their drug-related death rate has dropped, and their treatment rate has gone up. Those results are certainly better than Canada's. So it makes sense that Canadians would want to mirror that. Except Portugal's approach doesn't go far enough. First, drug possession has never been decriminalized. Despite the popular representation of their drug policy, drug usage in Portugal is still illegal for anyone using or possessing any drug for personal use without authorization. In fact, unlike in Canada, it's illegal to use marijuana recreationally in Portugal. For cases of possession where the amount is more than a 10-day supply, the offense is an administrative one rather than a criminal one. Plus, Criminal penalties can still be applied to growers, dealers, and traffickers. Second, while people who use or possess drugs may not automatically face a prison sentence anymore, they still must be prosecuted. Their drugs are confiscated and they have to appear before a special commission. This commission has several sanctions they can apply to these users. Fines, professional license suspension, travel bans, establishment bans, gun bans, confiscation of personal property, cancelling of social benefit payments. Third, the commission can avoid sanctions in favor of mandating offenders into treatment. It's technically not mandatory, but if your options are community service, fines, or treatment, it might as well be mandatory. Finally, law enforcement is still confiscating several tons of drugs every year. The money spent on these law enforcement efforts could be spent on prevention and treatment programs instead. Certainly, Portugal's action on the drug crisis is more progressive than Canada's, but we should be careful about framing it as the standard. As I've stated before, what we need to properly address the crisis are decriminalize all drugs, redirect enforcement funding to prevention, harm reduction, and treatment programs, make all drugs available through dispensaries and pharmacies, and include all drugs in a national pharmacare program. This approach makes drugs safer, it reduces drug usage in general, it reduces health risks, and it reduces crime. Thanks for watching. You can follow me online at seber.ca slash Kim. I'm also on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. If you appreciate the videos I share here on YouTube, the posts I write on my blog, and the content I share on my other social media accounts, please consider making a monthly donation, either through PayPal or Patreon. Creating and curating this content takes a lot of time, but I'm also running a business, which makes my time limited. Your donation would mean I wouldn't have to drum up business to pay my bills, which would allow me to devote more time to researching issues like this one. And I could post videos like this more often. Thank you for your consideration and your support. If you agree with the points I raised in this video, please give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below why. Please share my video and subscribe to my channel and I look forward to talking to you again soon.